Yeah, we tried that before. Eh, that won't work here. Have you ever heard either of those statements from colleagues or coworkers? Mm -hmm. Have you ever watched as their body language becomes really negative? Arms folded, eye rolls, knowing smirks when it's your time to talk in meetings. How about when you've ever presented an idea that has been flat out dismissed, only for another colleague at a later date to present the same idea and for it to be received with great enthusiasm and champion to life. Yeah, me too. Over the last 15 years, I've rose through the ranks in education, becoming a successful senior leader and head teacher. Finally, in those positions, I should be able to stand here and say, I've made a real difference to people who come from a background like mine. Those promotions should have signified real championship and real positivity for those, those positions that I've held. I stand here today, sadly, to tell you that over those 15 years, I've suffered some of the worst experiences of my life. It's really difficult sometimes when you're the only person in the room that looks like you. It's really difficult to ensure that you get your voice heard. It's really difficult to make sure that you make the change that you sought to be. When I've challenged colleagues about these actions, often hear, didn't see it, never heard it. They didn't mean it quite like that. Or even worse, there have been occasions where I've been told to simply man up. I'm not the only one who feels like this. I'm not the only one that this happens to. But they often stand in silence. Or even worse, they pile on to avoid being the victim. These everyday slights are known as microaggressions. They weigh you down, become a burden, makes you feel inadequate. At these times, they sap your confidence. They drain your capacity to do what you do in your role. They diminish your ability to flourish as a human being. Many of you in this room will have felt a story like this. You will have felt like this, especially if you felt like you've not belonged somewhere. Particularly people with protected characteristics, such as age, disability, ethnicity, gender, religion, or your sexual orientation. See, microaggressions significantly impact people of those protected characteristics. It's really, really challenging. And I hope that today is going to show you what we can do to move those things forward. What I've learned is that this is about the culture in our organisations. More pertinently, the culture of our society. My whole life, I've been taught that those people who work hard gain success. Fundamentally, this is true. But it isn't a fair and equal journey. For some people, the doors of opportunity are wide open. They stroll straight through them. For others, there's an assault course just to get to the door, only to find that it's bolted and padlocked shut. That's where inclusive allyship comes in. Allyship isn't about pity or charity. It's about taking action to ensure that we level the playing field. How can we all be inclusive allies? Firstly, it's about self-education. We can't rely on our own experiences and the lens that we view the world through. We have to go outside of that. We need to read books, watch documentaries, read articles, listen to podcasts, but most importantly of all, we need to engage with people who come from different backgrounds to us. 
Secondly, we need to become active listeners. We need to listen to those experiences without judging or interrupting of those people from those different backgrounds. We need to validate their voice and we need to accept their own life experiences. Sometimes just some having someone to listen makes all the difference in the world. Just knowing that someone cares will change everything for you. I can recall one time I was in a head teacher meeting. There was only one female colleague in the room. It was her time to speak on an agenda item. When she started to speak, I could hear the trepidation in her voice. She's lacking the confidence. She spoke through. When she finished talking, another colleague started talking and took over and changed the direction of where the conversation had gone. Essentially, he dismissed her idea. I knew in that moment I had to act as an ally. I had to speak up. So I spoke up about her idea, taking everybody back to that conversation and built upon it to help it gain traction. Afterwards, she confided in me to say just how much that simple act had meant to her. As we move on into number three, I've already demonstrated it, it's about taking action. Allyship isn't about good intentions. It's not just about standing by and saying, I meant to do this. Actually, we have to take action. We have to speak out. We have to challenge those microaggressions. We have to make sure that we work through the policies that we have in practice. It's about demonstrating positive behavior to eradicate some of those practices in our teams, in our workplaces, in our communities and beyond. So the question on the tip of all your tongues is, who can be an ally? We all can, we all should be. There's so many people out there that need our allyship. There'll be people in this room, your friends, your neighbors, a work colleague. And people are allies for different reasons. I implore you to find your why. What makes you tick in there? What is it that burns inside you? My why started out when I first became a teacher I advocated for black boys in schools. They were often misunderstood and mistreated because of that, just as I had been when I was at school. That why grew when I became a he for she ally because I'm the proud father of three young women of color. They're gonna go on to change the world. That's a different TED talk for another day. <laughs> it grew further when I, when I actually really understood that there are no hierarchy of needs for marginalized people. So again, I implore you to find your why, your reason for being an inclusive ally. I've been fortunate my whole life and my whole career to have people who've advocated for me. People who <laughs> saw me, heard me, champion for me to be my authentic self. Particularly when they've spoke on my behalf when I'm not present or in the room. That's made the world a difference. That's how I can stand here and be here today in the positions that I hold. Without that, I wouldn't have had the strength to carry on. I wouldn't have had the ability to keep pushing through those doors and unbolting them. And you know what? Being an inclusive ally is all about character. It's about respect, valuing diverse perspectives, and creating a culture whereby it's psychologically safe for people to be their authentic self. It's about integrity, doing the right thing, and staying true north on that moral compass. It's about courage, standing up and speaking out, advocating, challenging those microaggressions when you see or hear them, when it's scary, particularly when it's scary, because it's nowhere near as scary for you as it is for those people who live that every day. It's about humility, 
It's about understanding that we all hold biases and we're going to get stuff wrong. But being open to that and open to the challenge when we do and making those changes. Those four character virtues are underpinned by empathy. Knowing what it's like to, under, to, to walk a mile in the shoes of those people. Acknowledging their life experiences. I thank the people who have gone before me. I thank them because they have made the path wider. They have made the path clearer for us to follow on. I thank the younger versions of myself because they have given me the strength to stand here today and do the work that I do. They have made me the inclusive ally that I am. I think in the last few minutes you'll have found that it doesn't take much to stand up and show how we can be there for one another. Allyship is like a muscle. We have to work it every single day. When we do that, it becomes strong and striking and it builds a rich society. Rich, I want you to remember that because it's an acronym for respect, integrity, courage, and humility. Powerful acronym for you to remember as you embark on your own allyship journeys. When we do that, we enable each other to flourish and we build that rich society. Allyship is a journey and a formidable force for good. Every journey begins with a first step. What will yours be? Thank you.